Oh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Have you ever experienced the oil and the wine? Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. All right. Bring the priest. Bless the love. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I tell you what, we've had a lot of preaching here tonight. I like that sermon, Sister Dottie. I tell you what, you got to get in that fire. Yeah. You want this stuff? Hey, how can you be? How can you be a sacrifice before the Lord if you haven't been in the fire? Yeah. He don't want no stinking raw stuff. He wants something that's been set on fire for him. Amen. I tell you what, he wants it. Am I even talking out this thing? I was so loud, and he don't tell me when I'm too loud, and he said, well, if you can hear, I said, I can hear myself, I'm out there, so I can't hear myself, and anyway, so if I get too loud, Jerry said, tell me back away. <laughs> she told me I got loud. Well, I don't need to be loud. You know, I can't help it. I get excited, brother. I can't help it but get excited about Jesus. It's one of the things I come to church about is to get excited about Jesus. I tell you what, when I'm out there talking to people about Jesus, I get loud. And I get excited about Jesus. And I, when I come to the house of God and I'm with the body of believers, I'm going to get more excited about Jesus when I get in here. And I'm really going to do some shouting. You know what? Maybe I'm shouting because there's somebody standing out in the corner and they're walking by. And they need to hear somebody shout about Jesus. Amen. Woo! Lord. What am I saying? I'm saying we may not be the only ones listening. We don't know who's walking by. We don't know who's walking down the street. We don't know somebody has said I remember a woman that I knew, and she was a friend of mine. But she told me one day that she went down there to the little church, and she was sitting out there on top of that back there on the steps listening to the sermon inside. Well, if they didn't have the mic turned up and there wasn't a loud mouth like me, she might not have heard what was going on in there. Amen. She might not have heard the scriptures. Amen. 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 Woo! That's all right. What am I saying? Because we don't know who's God's reaching. We don't know who's going down that Jericho road that he's going down. We don't know who God is reaching. We come with expectancy tonight. We come in here with expectancy. I come to church with the expectancy. Amen. I didn't come for another mundane service. Uh, uh, no, no. I tell you what, I came with an expectancy. Uh, yeah. Let's turn over to Matthew 8. Matthew 8 1. I got a lot of scriptures, and I know it's late, y'all, but I'm going to preach what God gave me. Amen. And I'll tell you what, the sermon's never the same. Uh It's never the same. Because you don't know what God's going to do. When God shows up, the anointing shows up, you don't know what he's going to do. You don't know what he's going to say. You don't know what he's going to do. All I know is to be his vessel. All I know is to be his hands and his feet. I tell you what, he's already showed up here tonight. He's already using it, people in his church service tonight. He's already preached a word to the uh, to us tonight. If we have listening ears. If we came in with expectancy. If we came in here with expectancy. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leopard and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou... Will thou can make me clean? And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Man. Let's bow our heads. Right. Y'all reach your hands towards me and pray for the precious anointing of God. Lord, I pray for your precious anointing tonight. That you would take the calls from the altar tonight's place upon my lips. The Lord, that you would speak truth and life. Lord, that you would minister to our hearts tonight. That you would bring encouragement. 
that you would bring deliverance, that you would bring healing, that you would come in this place tonight, that you would fill our lives with your fire and your holy power. Lord, we come with expectancy tonight. We come with expectancy tonight to receive from you. We give you glory and praise in this place tonight. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on the Lord. Go ahead, say, Lord. His anointing is more precious than any It's the oil and the wine. And it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Yeah. It takes the anointing to break the yoke. Amen. Praise Amen. God, Lord. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Yeah. And immediately his leprosy was clean. Yeah. Only Jesus could clean. Only he could clean Amen. those with leprosy. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou, tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself. To the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Right. And when Jesus was entered in Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Amen. I'll come and I'll heal him. Come on. I will come and I will heal him. Yeah. Now there was a pattern here that I was watching as I read all these things to you. And I'm going to go back. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And Saturian answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The word of God. All we got to do is speak the word of God. Amen. Don't you know this word is alive? This word, this book, this red and white book, these letters are alive. And they're burning it. I don't know about you, Sister Geneva, but I tell you what, when I open the Word of God, it comes alive to me. It burns at me like a fire shut up in my bones. I can be over there, and I tell you what, if I haven't preached in the service for six months or, or something, I've got something shut up in my bones. Why? Because i got that Word in me. It's alive. This Word is life. Amen. It means something to me. Amen. I tell you what, they take this book, they set it in front of them, and then they got 10 books around them trying to dissect it. Oh, no. You know what you need? You need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah. dissect it for you. Yeah. Yeah. It'll teach you all truth. Amen. They get confused. They get all these flesh things, and they don't want the Holy Ghost teaching them nothing. Amen. That's right. That's right. It takes the Holy Ghost. It does. I tell you what, you get this word, you wrap it around your mind. Let the Holy Ghost teach you what it means. Amen. And saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy. Let's go on down. But speak the word only in my servant. It shall be healed. Uh -huh. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth. That's right. Come on. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that fall, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Did y'all hear the point? Right. Amen. What do we hear today? Good. He said, but many. That the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Amen. What kingdom are they on? I tell you what, I'm in the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. When I walk down those pearly gates, go through those pearly gates and walk down that gold street, he's going to look at me and say, well done, my servant. Yeah. Enter in. Amen. you got to have your mind made up. Yeah. You better have your mind made up. If you're in doubt, you ain't where you ought to be. Amen. If you're wondering if you're where you need to be tonight, then you're not where you need to be. Come on. Because I tell you what, you better not have doubt when you walk through that door, sister. Amen. Brothers, you better know that when you walk through those gates, 
There's no doubt on your mind. There's no doubt in your heart that when you see him, you come running to him. He's going to say, I'm ready to welcome you in with open arms. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That's what you're looking forward to. Yes. I'm not going to go in there trembling. I wonder if he'll take me. No. No. I'll feel his presence. I'll sense his presence. Oh, yeah. They'll say these things. Oh, did I not do all these things in your name? But he says, you work with iniquity. Let me, they will not have no excuses. Because see, there's thing, one thing when I come before him. I did nothing. I did nothing but you that was in me did it all. Amen. And when he stands in front of me and he sees his son, he sees the blood of Jesus applied to me. He's going to look upon his son and say, well done, my child, enter in. Amen. Because he's going to see that precious blood of the Lamb. Because I tell you what, if I enter in and Cheryl love, Cheryl love is not going to make it in. But I tell you what, this spirit that's in me, that new risen soul, that has a new name up in glory, I don't know that new name, but when I walk through those burning gates, I'm going to new know my new name. Amen. I'm going to know it. Amen. I'm going to know that new name. Let me tell you something. He says, I got a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Well, how's that go? There you go. I'm bound for heaven, brother. I'm bound for heaven. We got to know. We better have a made up mind. We better have a determination that when all the enemy comes against you and that old servant is standing there with his prayer and head at you and he's standing there ready to lash out, you better not stand there with fear, brother. You better be ready to cut that head off that servant. Amen. I tell you, that old servant, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You better have God in you. Amen. You better have Jesus in you. Yes. Because I tell you what, there's a lot today. They're running around like a bunch of chickens are, Come right? On. They lost their head. Come on. Amen. They lost their head. They're running around. You ever seen a chicken run around with that's head? I have. Oh, yeah. I used to sit in a school class and the lady across the corner, she used to take those chickens and wring those yeah. heads off of them and she'd throw them on the ground that you could still be running around. Yeah, I was a little girl and I watched that across the street. My, my dad had chickens and we used to pluck them. I was a little bitty thing, but I remember it. Yeah. Might have been grammatical to me at that time. But it sure tastes good when I eat it. Yeah. But I tell you what, I watch them wring those necks and those chickens are running around with their heads lost. Well, they're running around today with their heads lost. Yeah. They don't even know where their head is. That's true. And when they walk through those gates and they walk through those pearls, keep their going to not even realize they're not where they need to be. Uh, right, amen. Until they stand before him on judgment. Day. That's right. You better know where you need to be today. Today. They gave us something to think about there, Dwayne. That's a good, good point. That gives you some teenagers something to think about. Let's go on. Where was I? I want to get back to my scriptures. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out in the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the satyrian, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self, self same hour. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife mother laid and sick of a fever. And what did he do? He touched her hand, and the fever left her. It left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word. Amen. Again, with his word. Amen. He cast those spirits out with his word and healed all that were sick. So true. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he Himself took our infirmities. And bear our sicknesses. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Uh -huh. 
Now listen to what this word is saying. It tells us what he did. It tells us what he does. But we got people today carrying the bottle all around. Mm-hmm. Getting you oh, lined up all across the front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I can do that. Mm-hmm. And they're making you think they're healing your body. Mm-hmm. They're not. Nope. I no. tell you what, you mm-hmm. walk in there on the back aisle and you sit there and God move on someone and they God tells them to go there and lay hands because Jesus walked in and he knows what you're in need of. I tell you what, and they're standing across this thing. They're standing all across here and they think this man has got all power to get, heal your body and do all that. There's only one that can heal your body. Yeah. One that can heal your body. Yeah. It ain't hoop metal. It ain't this one over here or that one up there yeah. so they can pass the plate around and fill their pockets and get really yeah. fat on the, yeah. on the people. But let me tell you something, there's only one. Yeah. There's only one anointing. There's only one oil, and there's only one line, and it comes from Jesus. He's a healer. Guess what, Sister Geneva? We can get a hold of him by ourselves. Amen. Am I saying there's not gifts? Yes, there is gifts. I'm not saying that there's not gifts of laying on hands. I'm not saying there's not gifts of speaking, uh, doing these things. I'm saying. Are they doing it for a show? No, are they doing it to be seen? No, what are they doing no, it for? No, are they doing it because God told them to walk in there and, and touch that individual? And they want you safe, so they line them all up? Bless your Lord. Bless your Lord. Sometimes I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> if you know so much about me, then why don't you just call me out back there? Mm-hmm. I've seen them do that too. Uh-huh. And those are miracles. And that's the miracle there. Call me out and say, God told me that. Then I'll know. But line up and take a guess. Somebody here's got a, something wrong with their back. Well, guess what? There, I can tell you better. Probably three in here has already got back problems. Yeah. <laughs> There's something wrong. You got a thousand people in there and you start saying, God showed me you got back problems. Somebody else has got this problem. Yep, they sure do. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, it don't take no prophet to tell you that. Uh, I mean, all I gotta do uh, is look at my age. Uh, <laughs> and know that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, man. And I'm true. telling you, some people are so ain't got no head. No. The chicken lost their head. <laughs> and they're looking for something, and all they need is Jesus. Yeah. All they need is yeah. Jesus. Yes. That's all they need is Jesus. Yes. All they need is Him. Oh. Yes. I know these. This don't sound. This would not fly in some big church. That's right. I'd get run over and run out the door. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've been run out the door. That's okay. And I might have been run out door in some little ones, and that's okay too. Still love them. I might right. say, Jimmy, I'm still going to love him. I'll just go on and preach somewhere else. Right. Because you know what? I'm still going to preach what God gives me. Amen. Right. Because, see, I know there's only one. And Sister Love ain't got no power to do nothing. Amen. Come on. Come on. The one that has the power to do all things is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only one with the oil and the wine is Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that came down Jericho Road. He found me as a little girl. He washed off the dirt off of me. He picked me up and he poured in the oil and the wine and he healed my mind. And he healed Amen. my heart. Sister Lillian gave a testimony the other night and it blessed some family members the other night. I'm telling you, your testimony blesses people. Why? Because Jesus came. It wasn't the individuals, but it was Jesus that came. Uh, It was the Lord. All glory goes to God. All the glory. glory. He will not be replaced. He will not. Yes, we give honor. We give honor to those that obey God, just like Sister did today. She gave honor to Sister Rita and Brother Freddie for our obeying God, for helping. We, uh, we, we give honor. Sister Geneva said, thank you, Cheryl, for obeying God. I'm glad I did, because I don't always do. I don't always obey. We miss it sometimes, don't 
Then you might be in like this point. And you walk down through there and he says, I don't know you. You ain't, your spirit ain't been here. You just been going through some kind of a mundane service. This person over here is having a have a hallelujah time. Now I'm not saying you're not gonna go through it and you're not gonna suffer from it, but your spirit it's on fire and you'll take your time as long as it needs to take so somebody get what they need from God. Yeah. Your spirit may get something from the Lord and it touches your body and it makes you whole again. It gives you what you need because you were in expectancy. You didn't come in with a, a mundane spirit. A mundane. I want to call it mundane, but it's Monday. Right, tell you what it means. It says. Let me look at this real quick. Lacking interest. Yeah. We've lost interest. Uh, uh, or excitement. You're dull. Yeah. It's just ordinary. And yeah. it's just a common place, an everyday place out there. It's become ordinary. It's just become a common place. Relating to ordinary life on earth rather than spiritual things of God. It's no longer a spiritual thing to us. Mm -hmm. It's no longer plugged in. To the vine. You're no longer plugged into the spiritual things of God. It's just become a ritual. Say my prayer. Read the word of God. You sing the two songs. So now I need to get back to my devices. Uh -huh. How many devices are they trying to get back oh to? Oh my. How many Facebooks are they trying to get on? How many phones are they trying to get on? How many games are they trying to get on? And they're hooked into that, but they're not hooked to Jesus. They're waiting on the Lord to set some people free. And why is there no fire in the church today? Because they're so busy trying to get to the devices, the games of the world playing, and the world is doing the things of the world instead of doing what Jesus told them to do. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. That is I don't true. know about you, but I'm sure I'm convicted. Come on. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Come on. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Because we don't need to be like that. We need to have an excitement. We need to forget what's out there because Jesus might come back while we're in here. He may be here in the, the last Good. few seconds and that person got what they needed from the Lord. And right before he may walk through that gate, they got right before God and don't have to hear him say, I don't know. Right. They got what they needed. Boy. They got what they needed because people tarried. And wait upon the Lord. If they don't tarry and wait upon the Lord, how can the fire fall in them? Right. You gotta tarry and wait upon the Lord. You gotta tarry and wait on the Lord. God's gonna bless you, daughter. God's gonna bless you for what you're doing for him. He knows you're sitting through the service. He watches you. He's gonna bless you. He's gonna bless you for what you're doing. He sees what you're doing for him. He knows what you're doing. And I tell you what, he's probably crying with tears of joy at what you're doing. Tears of joy. Has the church become so mundane? Is the spirit of God there? Is he showing up anymore? Is there any spiritual things happening? The church has begun, become a mundane place, just a secular event and a common place. The church is a place where we should come to worship our powerful God who is able to touch our knees, to deliver our mind, to heal our bodies, to break uh, the chains of addictions, to save our souls, to set our minds free from tormenting spirits, from sicknesses and diseases, to set the possessed free, to give us strength, to encouragement. That's what the church is for. Now how, and tell me, how in the world are you going to get that in 45 minutes, Gary? Don't you remember driving 45 minutes to get in a 45 minute service and we stand it back 45 minutes? <laughs> and I said, what in the world was that about? <laughs> what was that about? Right. Come on. Hey. Did we get in a Monday rut? <laughs> right. Right. 
Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you ain't going to be there and the place is going to happen to you. You've got to keep your mind made up. Even yeah. when you're in those situations, it, man, you stay hooked to the vine. Let us worship God, get our minds on the Lord, wait on Him, and get our, in the presence until His fire falls. Oh, That's yeah. why I believe tonight with you. Amen. I believe His fire fell in here tonight. Uh -huh. I do. I believe it fell. Amen. You all see miracles and healing and no deliverance if you get in a hurry to That's get right. back to the things of this world. That's right. Because outside that door is the world. Right. And you can sit right there on that pew, and all that's in your mind is the world. Uh -huh. And then you can walk down those streets and then you'll say, I don't even know you because your mind is in the world and your mind is not on me. Amen. Come on. I come in here because I want my mind upon Jesus. Amen. I want my heart right Amen. before God. Amen. I want to get healing. I want to have deliverances. A certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee. Where, sir, that thou goest? And Jesus said unto him, The birds and foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury the dead. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're not alive. The dead right. are bur burying the dead. That's but right. you and I that are alive in Christ, when we buried Dwayne down here, I tell you what, we weren't burying the dead. It was a lie burying the lie. Come on. It was a lie burying the lie. He just was asleep. Come on. He was just asleep. But the dead, they buried the dead. And there's no more for them except a lake of fire. And when he was entered into his ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Ye of little faith. Why are you so fearful when that snake comes at you? And he wears his ugly head. Or he comes at your children. He yeah. wears his old ugly head. Yeah. That enemy comes up like a soldier. Snake. And they're frozen. I mean, a snake comes at you. It's free. Snake, got you. Can't eat a part from you. What are you going to do? You're going to freeze. Hey, bye. Come on. But you know what? As a child of God, we got to tell him back up. Get away from that old devil. Don't you play around with that devil. And if they can't move and they freeze in their place because of the fear that comes on to them, let me tell you something. It's you and I that's got to step in between that old enemy and that devil that is trying to come against your children. We got to stand in the gap and we got to cut that old serpent's head off. We've got to come in. Why? Because like Paul, you can walk in and you can put your hand to the fire. You can put your hand on that log and when that snake bites it, he cannot destroy you. Come on. But I tell you what, you can get a hold of that old snake and you can cut his head off. Right. Why? Yeah. Because greater is he that is in you yeah. than he yeah. that is in this world. Yeah. And let me tell you, you don't need some prophet up here telling you and prophesying over Come you on. everything that you need to do. Come on. Come on. All you need is a good Holy Ghost, a dose of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, and then he'll tell you what to do. And you get down on your knees and cry out to God, and guess what? He hears your cry. Just like he does that man. Amen. Just like he hears me. Amen. We come together. We come together. He said we're two or three and then his, and it, together. He's right there in the midst. Amen. We're two or three together. Okay, Amen. let me see. Sister Rita and this baby over here, we get together and start agreeing. My grandkids, we might be just me and two grandkids. We come together and two or three are gathered in his name. And if there's, if we're believing, guess what? God can touch my infirmity. Amen. 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 So true. I don't need some man from flying into a jet to come no. visit for me. No. <laughs> People are looking for somebody no flying in some jet. Amen. Uh, and all I need is the Holy Ghost uh, to show up. Yeah. All I need is Jesus. Me and Amen. Jesus. That's good. Yeah. He touched me many a time. Me, Mama, and Jesus. That's right. He had a boil on my leg. 
Guess what? Me, Mama, and Jesus got over there and prayed for that boy. That thing came open. Couldn't walk. I went back to work. Me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. Me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. And we don't need nobody to tell me what it's all about. Why? Because I know who my God is. I know who saved me as a little girl. I know who loves me and cares for me. Who shed his his awesome blood for me. His precious and royal blood for me. My God shed his blood for me. Well, and it I wasn't so I could come and go as I please, and I could live any life of sin I want, and I could go and 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 build some kind of a uh, fortune cookie for you, <laughs> and give you a fortune cookie that for a buck. That's yeah. not what he called me to do. No, no. He called me to preach the gospel and tell you you can have Jesus, you and Jesus, you have it all. Amen. Amen. You got it all. Amen. You got Jesus. Amen. You get Jesus, you got it all. Amen. People lose their expectancy. Yeah. They lose and yeah. it becomes mundane to them because they lost their relationship with God. Uh, they they're looking for something out of the people instead of coming with something themselves to give Amen. to the people. They need to come and worship God. It's not for the people. It's to glorify God. It's to give them glory and see them bless someone. And while he's blessing somebody, he will bless you as well. Amen. Okay. Let me go on. I'm so sorry that I'm going out so late. I got a late start. <laughs> Y'all just rest. Close your eyes. <laughs> Stay awake. <laughs> rest your eyes. <laughs> I'm willing to wait on the blessings of God. Bless her. I'm willing to wait for the possessed to get set. I'm willing to wait to see the leper get healed. Yeah. I'm telling you. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciple followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea and so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, for we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? What manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? Why are you fearful, and why are you so little faith? But the men marvel, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds of the sea obey him? And when he was come to the other side, into the country of Gergesene, there met him two, two, not one, but two possessed with devils, coming uh, out of the tombs, exceeding uh, fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Uh, Nobody could even pass that way. Can you imagine two demons coming out of there? Two <coughs> demons possessed with demons. Now, do you think that they was fixing to see Jesus? No. But God knew. He knew these men needed him. He knew that those possessed. Amen. Him. He knows the dope head. He knows the drug. He knows the drug dealer. He knows the murderer. He knows where you're at. He knows the heart, heart of where she's at. I'm telling you what, he knows where the possessed are. He goes to them. He finds you. He found me. And he went to them. And I'm telling you what, they come down with fierceness. But God came to those two men and he set those two men. And what did he do? He cast those demons out into those swine and they went right over there. Amen. Right over. And do you think that they cared about those two possessed men, the people? What do you think they cared about? They cared about that money. They cared all about the money that they were making off of these halls. More than they cared about their soul and their possessed souls. All they cared about was that money. They'll run you out and trample you down and run you out of town when the miracles start taking place and it affects some money. So true. It affects the money. Uh, true. They'll run you out of town uh -huh. so when true. it starts affecting that. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, this is real. This is the truth. This is true. And y'all already know it. Because I'm a year older than them. You can teach me a thing or two. And he says, when he's come to the other side, behold, they cried out, saying, What have I to do with thee? So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. I'm going to stop there because I pretty much went over that and told you what they had. And they went over to the edge and pretty much they got mad and ran them out. Of town. Y'all can come to the piano or not piano, but the musician. I tell you what, it's the truth. You, know, you can preach the same time, you never come to say it. There's nothing like the word together now. Because God knows what we need. I buy before we even ask. He knows what we need before we walk through the door. I buy he knows what we need. He knows if you're getting in one of those places and you're starting to question, you're getting into a place where you say, let's just get there, get it over with, and get back home. Get back to Rawhide. Get back to the Facebook. Get back to my phone call that I want to call. Get back to these other things. But see, if you come that away, there's something wrong. I didn't come to die spirit. I tell you what, I've been in service since we were there till midnight. I was one of those that kicked those shoes off and threw them back there in the back. Because the power of God come on me so strong. Yeah. I haven't done that in a while. I haven't kicked my shoes off like that. This is the new thing. I haven't either, but I like it. I like it. I won't feel that. Amen. I won't feel that presence. Amen. That power. Yeah. Is my spirit still rolling inside of me? Yes, it is. But is there so much world out there that's coming in trying to press in into the churches? Yes, it is. Amen. That's true. You and I got to come into the house of God. And we got to allow ourselves not to get in that Monday place where we get in a place where we just ready for the service to end and get out there and get back. I know we got to rest in our bodies. I know that. I'm not. I'm not stupid. I know sometimes I work all day and been painting all day and climb scaffold. But I still come to church with an expectancy. With expectancy. When I come through that door, I come with expectancy and pray on the Lord. Not in a hurry to get out. If I'm too tired, I'm going to be a hindrance. I'll just lay in that bed. I'm not going to come in here and hinder you. No. I want to come in here with expectancy. I don't want the pastor to come up here and say, I'm going to give you a howdy doody.